been good day to you, whatever day it is. This is Pastor Larson at Trinity Lutheran Church in Delray Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. And we're putting together this Bible study for your benefit and ours. The idea is, is that we will continue to talk about one of our favorite subjects, and that is the subject of prayer. The Lord loves to hear us pray. I read from 1 Peter 3, verse 12. His ears are open to our prayer. There's a Bible verse that distinctly tells us that the Lord loves to hear us pray. Today, I want to talk about confidence in prayer. How can we have more confidence that God hears our prayers? And what does it really mean to tack on Jesus' name to the end of our prayers? What does it mean to pray in Jesus' name? If we get time, and I know how time runs, <laughs> uh, we'll see if we can talk about some misunderstandings about prayer and find out, is prayer something optional that we can just give up? I really don't think we'll get that far today, but let's see, all right? Let's get started. Let's review what we said last week. What we said last week about a God-pleasing prayer. Do you remember that a God-pleasing prayer is a response of a believer to the grace of God freely given in his Son, Jesus Christ? Without Jesus coming as our mediator between us and the Heavenly Father, we could not pray at all. This Jesus, not one we have made up, but the Jesus revealed in the Holy Scriptures, is the one by whom and through whom alone we sinners are able to stand in God's presence and hope to be heard and know we are heard in Jesus' name. How can Amen. we hope to be heard? Well, there are many Bible verses that encourage us to pray with confidence. Here is one that reaches back into my memory. I can take this verse back to uh, the late 1960s, when the pastor stood up in a loud voice and said the intro it for the day, including these verses from uh, Psalm 130. And back then it was the King James, so that's the one that got centered in my memory. Out of the depths have I cried unto you, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. My pleas for mercy in this translation. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand but with you? There is forgiveness that you may be feared. Without the forgiveness that is ours in Christ, there would be a blockage, uh, a hindrance, a <coughs> wall through which none of us uh, could uh, penetrate. There is forgiveness with our Lord. I think we should say amen to that. There are many sins, uncountable as they are. They are all forgiven how can we hope to be heard? Judy, would you read Hebrews 9, 22? Can you fix it so that that's like sure on the screen? Judy, are you up to reading Hebrews 9, 22? Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I was coughing. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. That's true, isn't it? How can we hope to be heard? Um, who can read Hebrews 10, 21 and 22? I will. Since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hebrews 10, 21, 22. Thank you. In full assurance of faith. 
full assurance of faith. That's the confidence because we are forgiven and our consciences are clean. Oh Lord, forgive my sins and take them away through the blood of Jesus and make me right in your sight as you have promised. And the bodies washed with pure water, I believe is an allusion to baptism. How can we hope to be heard? Uh, another reader, please, Psalm 32, verse 1. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose uh, sin is and it's covered. Covered. So that's the covering over the mercy seat of uh, the Old Testament in the tabernacle and in the uh, temple, the transgression is forgiven and the sin is covered by the blood of Jesus. The one whom God has forgiven through the blood shed by Jesus is righteous. Not maybe righteous or could be, might be. God has declared it so. Jesus, the bloodshed, the, the one is righteous in God's sight, and this is one way of pronouncing the gospel. It's impossible to talk about prayer without saying something about this gospel. I have faith in the gospel of Jesus. Do you? I know you do. Yes. Our forgiveness is only and always through and because of Jesus. Without that, there is no opening for prayer. Back to Judy, please, for Romans 5, verse 2. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Thank you. Through him, that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have this access. It is like God has opened the door to come into his presence. And we received that permission to come in through faith in this grace of God. And maybe you have heard the expression that we live in a state of grace. All believers stand, and that means they exist, and they have confidence in that God-given existence. This grace in which we stand, we have that standing. And because of that, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, now and, and forever. So this is a great gift that God has announced through St. Paul in that wonderful doctrinal letter called the Letter to the Romans. Now, I know that you want to talk about <laughs> in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I have... Uh, I have taught this um, every time I taught adult confirmation, and you'll see what, um, what we do with this. But we have a lot to say about praying in Jesus' name. But before we look at the scripture together, I want to know from you, if you will please volunteer, what were you taught concerning ending your prayers with the words, in Jesus' name. Volunteer, please. Um, well, I was taught that um, you pray um, through Jesus is the one that came, and it is through the blood on the cross that we um, receive the uh, I guess, receive the gifts. So, so it's through Jesus' name that we pray. It's through his sacrifice for us. Okay, good, good. I'm not sure I was taught this, but this is kind of what I think, that uh, when you say in Jesus' name, you're kind of like name dropping, you know? Oh, so name dropping. God, I'm, I, I'm really serious about this prayer. And, you know, I'm praying it because I believe 
through Jesus, I will be heard. Okay, good. That's, that's, that's what I was taught. Anybody else? I in want the to name ask, of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. There are different ways of saying it. May I ask a question? Please, uh, do, Chris. Um, so I was never taught really anything. And I know a lot of people say they pray to God, but they don't use Jesus' name. I have uh, of late done that, but I can't say I'm great. So how do you move forward? Do you read the four gospels to, re to move forward? Or <clears throat> a lot of people say, well, I pray to God, but they don't pray through Jesus. Well, let's establish what we've already said, that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness and there's no relationship between uh, a person and God, right. okay? Right. The true God. Right. Now, it, let's assume that the person praying is a believer and then, then the door is open. If the person does not believe in Jesus, the door is open, but the person has not walked through that door in faith to believe in him. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of ways of talking about believing in Jesus. You have to believe in salvation and grace. I yes, I, I don't like the words have to, because that's something God has given. But pardon me for correcting that slight. The yeah. whole thing is this relationship. But what I'm asking is, were any of you taught or, or you have the feeling that if you don't say the words in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Yes. If you don't say that, the prayer isn't heard or isn't effective. No, <clears throat> no, I think it was just, it, it also shows that we, um, as Christian believers, believe that Christ has already come and will come again to take us home, the second coming. So it kind of tells where our, where our faith is, I guess. We're not still in the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament, believing Jesus has already come down on earth. Okay. Yeah. Do you do we have to say those words at the end of every prayer? I would say not if we believe in the triune God. All right. He knows that, so that's already established. Yeah, that's what I think, too. So you could leave it off. Uh, how about the word amen? Can you leave off the word amen? Amen. <laughs> the choir is singing. Uh, what does amen mean? Is we agree. Yes, it means it is so. In the name of I believe Jesus. that I am heard. If I believe that I am heard, um, my amen is a yes. God adds his yes in Jesus Christ. So uh, I know what amen used to mean at the dinner table. It means that we can start eating. <laughs> It meant no. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, uh, but in Jesus' name. Now, I don't mean you should stop adding in Jesus' name to your prayers out of self-consciousness. And maybe I'm spending too much time on this. But I don't want you to be, here's my point. I don't want you to be self, so self-conscious about your prayer that you worry about uh, the, the grammar and the punctuation and the way that you say Jesus there are some people that spend uh, mm -hmm. uh, a longer time on the first syllable of his name. Mm -hmm. It sounds more, uh, I don't know, it sounds more effective, but I don't think uh, the Lord is impressed at all. It's not how you pray, because it's uh, the Lord knows your heart in Jesus' name. I also um, think that, you know, when you're... Um, meeting and dealing with someone who maybe does not know Jesus or only knows is still waiting for Jesus to come that um, out of sensitivity for where they're at and you're trying to establish a relationship you might not say it but you might say to God or to the Lord and use a terminology they're aware of 
Yes, the simple way is to say, oh God, hear my prayer, and just say the word God, because you have the full revelation of what and who God is. Right. It's not a figment of your imagination. It's the God who has revealed himself in the Holy Scriptures. And you are coming to more and more as you study the word and hear the word and sing and pray the word. You're learning more and more what it means to say God and all that he is, mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the words have this meaning of connecting you to the Lord God. Now, I frequently use this distinction, and I have talked about it before, but let me review it just briefly. There is the word God, which is generic, small g. And there are many false gods, which are not capitalized, small g. But the God of the Old Testament is God the Lord, it's the Lord God. It's the God who is Lord. And I say it all three ways. So many of my prayers begin with Lord God. And I am saying that I'm confessing the true God who is the Lord. And the word Lord has, oh, rich and deep meanings, which mm -hmm. uh, have to do with his being the Lord for us and under us, and ahead of us, in all of the prepositions. Not just Lord as in boss. You understand I put the word boss no. in quotes. It's lots of meanings. Lots of meanings. So that's what I want to talk about uh, in your prayers in Jesus' name. I think uh, uh, we could ask uh, Chris to read what Jesus said here. Chris, are you up for reading this? Yes. yes. Uh, Jesus said, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. John 14, 13, 14. That is a powerful promise. Yes. It, it, look at it. it has the word whatever, which is a blank into which you can put anything. Okay. And yes. the promise that you ask in his name and he will do it. Now yes. I want you to notice what comes next. Were you going to say something? Well, this is such a great lesson. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I want you to notice what comes after Jesus says, this I will do. The word that signals a purpose is coming. Mm -hmm. The purpose is not that you get what you ask, which is, of course, true. <laughs> but the ultimate thing is that the Father will be glorified in the Son. That the connection between the Father and the Son, which is a great mystery that none of us can understand, that the Son glorifies the Father and the Father glorifies the Son. That is the teaching of John 17 in Jesus' prayer before he went to the cross. Now then the, uh, Jesus repeats his prayer, his prayer promise. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. But remember that it has to do with the purpose of the Father being glorified in the Son, in the connection that they have. And so what happens when the prayer is answered is not just your joy, which you have, but that the Father is glorified. Now, here is a slight caution. <coughs> the, the Father is not going to be glorified in the Son for something that is not the Father's will for you or for whomever you are praying you understand what I said? That mm -hmm. if you ask for something that is wrong, that is against the Father's will, there's no glory in the Father and the Son and their relationship. So 
Remember, we are asking. So maybe we should underline the word ask. And no one, no one of us is going to demand anything of the Lord God. You and I have a humility before him. That doesn't mean we don't ask in confidence. And it doesn't mean we don't ask repeatedly when the ailment or the problem or the situation just will not be resolved in human terms. And then perhaps the answer is remain under this situation, this affliction, this illness, this approach to death, remain under it and I will be with you in that. That's an important element of faith that we uh, kind of lean back, uh, I'm doing it physically to demonstrate and relax in the Lord's arms and saying, okay, you got this. That's where, we're at. That's where we are in prayer. In the name of the God made flesh who showed us the Father and who promised the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to pray in the name of Jesus, who is God in the flesh, Emmanuel, who showed us the Father and promised the Holy Spirit. So the triune God is always, always in, invited. All right, so we'll go on to the next verse. This is what it means to pray in Jesus' name. In the name of him through whom we have access to the Father, remember the Bible verse we had earlier, in which we stand, in our prayers. Jesus established this relationship how did he do it? By his righteous life, and by his substitutionary death, and by his glorious resurrection. And we could add his promise to return, as Judy has been reminding us this morning. Okay, do you have this idea of in Jesus' name? We're going to do more. Yes, Even for a second. Go ahead. Uh D has joined us. Good. Good morning, D. I don't know if your audio is on, but we see that your name is there and you're listening. In Jesus' name, when we pray in Jesus' name, we are simply confessing our faith in him. And so, because we have faith in him and his, his will is always right and good for us, and that means when we pray, we really want our will to be aligned with his will. Not the, other, not the other way around. I know that you want the Lord's will to be changed. Well, he might do that. But I don't have a promise. Okay. Lord, I want this, but more than wanting this, I want your to be will, will to be done in this matter. And I have confidence that your will is good for me. Now, I'm going to immediately admit that that's not always easy. When you're suffering and you want the pain to end, or you want the relationship that is, has been ruined by sin to be healed and repaired, we've all been there, well, Lord, please do what you can. I think I've done all I could. And lead me and, and guide me by your word. If there's anything I can do to, to repair what has been broken, I will take myself to the doctor that you have provided and uh, ask that you guide him or her and the pharmacist and all the others in the medical team do your will, please, through this. And then just drop it in his lap in prayer. John 15, verse 7. Uh, who would if you praying? abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatsoever you wish, and it will be done for you. All right. There's a prayer promise, if you abide in me. And uh, who will read 1 John 5, 14? Precious. 
promise. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 1 John 5, 14. Now let's emphasize some words, all right? Yeah, I was just going to say, you have to know what his will is. Okay, here's, here, here, here are the emphases. I'm going to repeat the Bible verse again. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Now what does that have to do with prayer? If you are seeking the Lord's will to be done, and by faith you are abiding in Jesus. In John chapter 15, Jesus is talking in terms of, I am the vine and you are the branches, and you're connected with me. And if you abide in me, that means stay connected. You got it? You stay connected by faith in Jesus. That's first part. The second part is, and my words abide in you. If Jesus' words are abiding in your heart and in your heart and mind as well, your mind as well, then you will know in general what the Lord's will is. You've got the commandments, and you also have Jesus' application of the commandments, like in uh, the Sermon on the Mount, and other places when he uses the imperative verse. When you have studied the word and heard the word, sung the word and prayed the word of God, and it's in your heart, it's abiding in you, and it's part of you. And then when you begin to ask, you say, no, wait a minute, I can't ask for that because God doesn't want that. Or I can't ask for this because I have an example of people being healed because they ask, uh, someone asked for, for healing. And so that's one of those words abiding in me, and I am bold to ask God for healing. You see, it's because I, I have God's word abiding in me, not perfectly. We're all still working on it. I don't think we'll ever know God's word perfectly until we get to heaven. No one here knows the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get my importance, my emphasis, and my words abide in you. Now the second verse has a similar, I don't want to say correction, but it puts some, uh, some guardrails, I will say. This is the confidence that we have. That's what I want us to have when we pray. I want all of us to have confidence that God hears and confidence that we are praying according to his will. And so this is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If you don't know his will, ask. I don't know what your will is in this matter, Lord, um, but I want your will to be done. And though it might be difficult, I will accept what you, what you will. And I ask you for help in accepting that. This is the confident prayer of a child going to the Father. In Jesus' name, and praying. Amen. So, go ahead. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I would like the choir to start up again. <laughs> yeah. Is that? Uh, not going to start up this week. When we oh. pray in Jesus' name, we are wanting good as God defines good. And it has nothing to do with evil or greed and not with selfish motives. That last part is the hardest one. Hmm. Anybody want to talk about selfish motives when you pray? I'm going to get in trouble, will I? <laughs> yeah, I understand. I don't want to get in trouble. Um, <laughs> I sometimes, um, I want something too much, too badly. No, you don't. 
<laughs> and uh, I won't give it no, to you. you. You do just right. Thank you. Uh, Linda, would you be willing to read James 4, 2, and 3? You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Passions, oh my goodness sakes. That means any want or desire that is contrary to God's will. Oh, okay. okay so, that's so the thing. covetousness that is in us, I want, I have to have, and the other passions of life, which are uh, food and sex and comfort and all those matters that delight our senses. I believe that our world has gotten far too sensual in the past half century. Mm. That's personal observation. Uh, God has given us our senses to enjoy the gifts he gives us. But when we desire those experiences above the gift of God that is embedded in them, then I think we are going after the wrong goal, the wrong choice. Oh. When you pray, remember that the Lord is a perfect judge of your motives. Now, immediately, I don't want to use that as a clamp or as a hindrance to keep you from praying. But I want you to realize that before you pray, investigate what it is that you're praying about. I think as you grow closer to the Lord and you learn more about him, you know when you ask for something that's wrong. I mean, you almost, you know, you might blurt it out and then you might take it back saying, that really isn't, isn't what... Um, I should have, and you know better, and it's real hard to pull those back, but our human nature sometimes wants those things. Um, oh, okay. Last question here again, Pastor. Go ahead. So the saying is, be careful what you wish for. I think okay. that's a horrible saying, but sometimes you wish and pray for something that is not in God's will, and you get it. Is that okay. <laughs> I, I've been wondering about this. I, I remember part of a poem that I used in teaching, and I'll see if I can bring it back. Uh, how, how blind we are on our own ruin bent. Uh, <laughs> teach us, uh, Lord to not ask for that which can hurt us. Now, I, I ruined the poem, but that was the thought. Yeah. Don't give me what I want. Mm -hmm. Give mm -hmm. me what I need. Correct. Okay. <laughs> That's a distinction that every Christian needs to learn. And the earlier the child learns it, um, you know how I feel about asking a child, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> A child now. Um, uh, yeah. When the Lord asks us, what do you want? You know, mm -hmm. when Jesus comes up to the blind man, what do you want that I should do for you? And he said that I may see. And Jesus said, you have it. Okay, and now, now I got it straight. How can we hope to be heard? I'm going to talk more about confidence. And I can see that the uh, time moves by so quickly. And I think the tangents are helpful today. Let me know if I go out too far. It was easier to go on long tangents when I was with you in the classroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, this slide uh, uh, kind of corrals us a little bit. How can we hope to be heard? Where, are we, where, are we, are, where will we go for confidence in our prayers? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw, oh, maybe eight or ten uh, Bible passages for us to increase our confidence in prayer. Okay. But first, the caution. If only a righteous person can be heard, uh, James 5, 16 says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person. Oh, yeah. Righteous. How are we sure that God hears our prayers? Yeah. Back in Genesis 15. Who's that? 
Moses recorded that Abraham believed the Lord, Lord, yes. and he counted it to him as righteousness. That's the important yes. word. And St. Paul, when he's writing his letter, is making the point that we are brought to faith in God, and then God gives us the righteousness of faith. So Paul oh, okay. quotes this verse, Abraham believed God, and it was counted, that means reckoned or, or attached to him, as now right. I understand. So that's how we get righteousness, by believing in God's promise to save. Okay. So Abraham and David, as well as Paul, prayed in the righteousness that God had declared. God okay. is the judge, and he makes a judicial ver verdict upon us, and he pronounces us righteous, but I'm not righteous. You are in my sight, says now I understand. because of Jesus. How can we hope to be heard? Am I righteous now I enough? understand. Am I righteous enough to be heard? Yeah. Well, there isn't a righteous enough. You're either righteous in God's sight or you're not. And right. by faith in Jesus, you are declared perfectly righteous, believe it or not. Okay. Okay. But what if I feel, now this is a dangerous word, and I'm putting it in there intentionally. I'm wondering about that. I'm going to put it in there intentionally, and then I'm going to back it out in a bit. What if uh -oh. I feel that my sins have caused the Father to turn his face away from me? Remember that mm -hmm. verse from Psalm 30? So that he seven, does not. As he turned his face away from me, I might feel that when my guilt is overwhelming me so that he doesn't hear me. And what you do if you feel, I don't like that word, but it is your, your reaction inside yourself. If you feel the reason that your sins have caused the Father to turn his face away from you, then the thing to do is to confess that sin to ask for forgiveness, he removes it. He, you know that. Now I understand. And now his ears are again open to your prayers. Now I get it. You see, if I know that my sins are forgiven, then his face is not turned away from me. And my okay. feelings, this is, hear me well on this, my feelings have absolutely nothing to do with it. There is an objective truth. Oh, I'm so in love with objective truth that it's true whether I believe it or not. It's true whether I exist or not. And the fact that my son has been paid for means that he has not turned his face away from me. I have repented of that sin. And no longer does this stand between me and the Father. So take the feelings out of there and go to the objective okay. forgiveness in Christ. How can I possibly be righteous enough for him? Yes. Here is the answer from Romans yes. chapter 3. Uh, Pastor, could you read Romans 3, 21 to 22? That's on the screen now. Yes. Yes, I could. I'm looking for the... But now, the righteousness of God has been manifested uh, apart. apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Romans 3.21 All right. The righteousness of God has been given to us. It's been manifested and it's been shown. Wait a minute, I can't hear you. It's all through faith in Jesus. Paul says, I come to God not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, like he used to think, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. Okay. You see, when we talk about prayer, we don't leave behind all the, the teaching regarding Jesus and his cross. It, it is that that allows us to talk to God at all in prayer. 
How can we hope to be heard? Now, this is a final uh, subject for the day, I'm sure, because I have these Bible verses I want us to, to know um, and, and to believe. Let's talk about confident prayer. Okay. Judy. Okay, please. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. See the word confidence? Now I understand. Okay. Uh, Chris, we've got Ephesians 3 on the <clears throat> screen. Would you read that, please? Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You, know, you ask for a little. <laughs> and he yeah, gets, our, our president more. knows that now. He is able to do far more abundantly. Yeah, I wonder about him. How can, how can we hope to be heard? Ephesians 3.12, uh, Linda. <clears throat> Ephesians 3.12, in whom Christ Jesus, we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. See the word confidence there? We have boldness. Can you pray? Now with, I get it. Can you pray with boldness? You sure can. All the time. See? All right. Uh, who have we left out? Who, who was another reader for First John 5? Excuse me, I got it. Okay. Um, oh, it's Bob. I don't know if Bob is. Uh, I think the I think he said he had the drive. I'll read the next one faster. Please. First uh, John five verses fourteen and fifteen, and this is the confidence that we have towards Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us, and if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of Him. Isn't that a powerful prayer promise? This is the confidence that we have. We have yes. anything according to his will. And if yes. we know that he hears us, and we know we have Amen. what we've asked. All right. Now I understand. More for confident prayer. Back to Linda, please. John 9.31. <clears throat> John 9, 31. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Okay. We know. Now we know. Okay. First Peter 3, 12 is the one that yeah. I read when we began our study. Yes. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. Amen. And what Peter is quoting is uh, Psalm 34, verse 15. He's got his eye on Psalm 34, or he knows it by heart. And this is beautiful when you see the Apostle Peter, when you see his faith blossom uh, as he's writing those two letters. You see the maturity that has come upon the disciple that has so many problems uh, when he was walking and talking with Jesus. Uh, Chris, would you read Jeremiah 29? Then My wife you, says, I talk too much. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. That seeking with your heart is, is nothing but the, the faith of your heart. Okay? And this is a promise that the, that the prophet is giving the people call upon me and pray to me and I will hear you. He is quoting God to the people. He's like a priest, more like a priest than a prophet when he, when he speaks to the people with these words. It's a wonderful prayer promise that's kind of buried there and probably not uh, well known. Confident prayer. Who has uh, the... Uh, who has a strong voice to read uh, th uh, these four verses? Amen. Uh, Psalm 66, 17, verses 17 to 20. 
I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Is that a prayer promise? This is the experience. I didn't look up to see if it was David or Asaph or one of the other prayers of the Old Testament. Um, but it is an experience that he had. And now I understand. Listened. God listened. And finally, John 16, 24. Jesus. Chris, would you read that? Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive. That Thank you. joy may be full. There is something. When your prayers, uh, whether it's for kidney stones or a great-grandchild or a good health report, when the answer to prayer is given, the, uh, the thing you prayed for, the person you prayed for, the situation you prayed for, it comes to pass with an answered prayer, maybe more than you even asked for. Mm -hmm. There's a joy. But you got, There's you got a joy it, right? that is sometimes unspeakable. Hmm. No words for it. Constant <clears throat> prayer. Now, if we have a few moments to before we close today, I want you to look at these three questions and uh, pick uh, whichever one you want to talk about for just a minute or two. During what situations in your life has prayer been difficult for you? Or talk about this. What kinds of things get in the way of your prayers to keep you from praying? Or what is the Lord saying through his word today that dissolves those blockades, those walls, those hesitations, those mm -hmm. doubts, and moves you to pray with confidence? Mm -hmm. This is a time for, for you to talk. And I'll leave it on the screen. So anyone who wants to share, go ahead. Mm. Well, during what situations in your life has prayer been difficult for you? Um, I, I'm always going to say, I think when things are going well, I just plain forget to sit down and really thank the Lord for everything that's going well on a daily basis when, when things are all up. Uh, when things go south, that's when um, I get more faithful. It's real easy to just plain forget when things are going well, sad to say. Yes, yes. Well, I would say to you, make a list of mm -hmm. things to praise God for. And uh, you can start with the breath that you take. Amen. The daily bread. And hmm, then the words will flow from your awareness. Mm -hmm. Anyone else on any of these questions? We got that cleared up. I, I yeah. think uh, if you get to number two, what kinds of things get in the way? It's possible your mind could go, well, why is this happening to me? Maybe I did do something wrong. And and you, you, you're looking at what you might have done wrong, if we want to call that a sin. And, and, and you're, you're kind of, in, you're not able to pray at that moment when you should. Yes, you, know, that would you be, got it, sister. You got it right. Yeah, yeah. Then look at the cross. Yeah. Amen. And see your sins nailed there. My sins are gone. My sins are gone. <laughs> because God has said so. Yes. All right. Anyone you got else? it right. Anyone else want to share here? The kinds of things that get in the way of prayer sometimes is just you find yourself being busy 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Other stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have one little thing that says a day hemmed in by prayer does not quickly unravel. So if you start your day with prayer and end it with prayer. Say that again. The day. A day hemmed in with prayer does not quickly unravel. That's, that's good. Mm. Not praying, it tends to unravel. <laughs> mm. It sounds good. Um, back to, uh, Pastor, what I was saying before about number two, I think we, we feel sorry for ourselves and we, we forget to click into prayer. Okay. Good. You're busy thinking that you can fix it rather than knowing <laughs> that somebody else can fix it. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I can fix it. Yeah. The old control issue. <laughs> yeah. I want to say this, and we'll talk more about it next time if, uh, if it gets into the slides. The idea that uh, I'm busy and it gets in the way of sitting down for so many minutes and pray and, and then I'm done for the day. Uh, that's good, but you're never done because in the middle of the day, there's a situation comes up. It's not, it's not overwhelming, but you need help. And just a quiet little prayer thought that never reaches your lips, but reaches the Lord's ears because he hears you asking for that little bit of help in that situation. You see what I'm saying there? We've, yeah. we've, we've called, um, some of my friends and I have called those little bullet prayers that you send up during the daytime on short notice. Bullet prayers. Bullet prayers. <laughs> I've never heard that term. Oh, yeah. right. You <laughs> see, the Lord's ears are open to all of your prayers. The formal ones, the ones you read from a book or from a prayer book or from your memory, but he's mm -hmm. also hearing those musings, Lord, uh, I'm gonna, I, I need your help here in this. Mm -hmm. You don't have to explain it to him. You know, that you don't, oh, you don't need a long You did a practice. good job. He already knows. I think uh, I remember in, in confirmation class when we did take time to learn the different types of prayers and we always learned that there was the, the official a kind of an opening of giving praise or thanks and uh, then the way you ended the prayer. But like I said, these bullet prayers are something, sometimes you don't have time for um, nothing more than Lord help me in a situation. It might be when you're out on the road driving or something like that. Yeah, or so, as you said, he knows, he knows what your need is right at the moment there. Okay. So, you're sitting in a doctor's office and, and just as your name mm -hmm. is called to come in, and you're going to hear something about, oh, oh, you're going to hear something. You understand at that moment, mm -hmm. you are a little bit afraid of what you might hear. Mm -hmm. You've been there? Mm -hmm. I've been there. Been there, been there. Yeah. And and either you or someone you love, and you're going to hear something awful. Uh -oh. Oh. So what does that happen? Help me to deal with this, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. He hears that. So you see today, I, I really have talked more here about uh, a confident prayer, a, um, a prayer that, uh, that is- you did, you did a good job there, Pastor. So I want us to, to close in, in prayer. And then um, I'm excited about getting back together with you next week to talk more about confident prayer and the idea that his ears are always open to our prayer, Lord God, how glad we are that you are a God who cannot be far from us at any time, but that you are near to us and your ears open to our prayer. We know that you are wanting us to bring all of our praises to you, which could be endless. And we also know that you want us to bring our cares and our concerns to you casting all our care upon you because we know you care for us. So let us pray the scripture verses that encourage us to pray to you and give us confidence that when we pray, we are definitely heard. And please always answer according to your will in this matter or that, 
whether the cares are great or small, whether they are for ourselves or for others. We pray with confidence in you because of Jesus. In his name, we end this prayer in this time of prayer with you. Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. Amen.